So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to install a timing advance wheel on your uh, 2001 Mazda Miata. Uh, the timing advance wheel is basically the same thing as your stock timing wheel that goes behind the crankshaft uh, pulley, only it has slotted holes, so which is going to allow you to adjust that like that, which is going to um, allow you to advance or retard your stock timing, uh, your base timing and uh, gain a little bit of power that way. It says right here from 5X Racing that it is dyno proven to add five horsepower and six pounds of torque. Now how this works from a uh, sort of science standpoint is that there's a little bit of wiggle room that they give you um, with the factory ECU. Of course the, the later ECUs like the one in the uh, MB2, the 2001-2005 Mazda Miata, do have a knock sensor and it will pull timing if you start to knock uh, by using uh, poor grade fuel. How the uh, timing advance wheel works is that these cars are designed to run on 91 octane. Um, 91 is what they want you to run so that they can fully advance the timing in super hot weather and it's still got a little bit of wiggle room for uh, you know so it, it won't detonate for normal people driving the normal street car won't have any issues running regular pump gas if it has some inconsistencies or if it's really hot that day or really cold the uh, the engine won't care um, a lot of people actually can get away with running uh, mid-grade fuel in 89 octane uh, because that's still within the limits of the stock ECU there's no detonation at 89 octane in most conditions um, so that's sort of they, they give you some wiggle room from the factory but with this you're eliminating that wiggle room and you're advancing the timing two degrees or such um, between two and four degrees is what you're, you're able to advance it to and what that basically does is sort of closes up that little gap like from the factory you know you're you're not very close to detonating you got a lot of wiggle room you know a lot of things can happen you can put the wrong grade fuel in and you're not gonna detonate in the engine it's not gonna have to pull timing but with this you're getting it a lot closer so now you got a lot less wiggle room so you will have to run premium fuel which is not an issue at all for me because uh, it's meant to run on 91 and sometimes able to hold run on 89 but in my area we have uh, we have 93 all, all the time so this isn't going to be an issue for me at all I'm going to be able to advance the timing a little bit and basically you're getting rid of a little bit of the uh, factory safety that's built in there and replacing that with a little bit more horsepower dyno proven so the first thing you need to do to install this is to uh, take off your intake air tube uh, which you do by removing this little screw I think it's a 10 or a 12 mil it is a 10 millimeter and then once that's undone you can just slide that off um, and then you're gonna wanna come down to this connection right here slide that off and then you're gonna need to unplug your uh, mass airflow sensor there you go and then uh, there's an IAT sensor Air temperature, intake air temperature sensor. All right, so that's unplugged. Uh, now, if you have a completely unmodified engine, it's going to be a little bit different, uh, but pretty much the same thing. You're basically just removing this to get access to the belts. So, then you can take this off. Now we can sort of see what we're what we're working with. The um, timing plate is this piece right here. This little black piece. See that nub? right there, let's see if I can zoom in yeah there's a little nub right by my finger and that's what goes past the uh, crankshaft position sensor and lets you lets the engine know where the uh, crankshaft is at so now you're going to work on uh, taking off these belts starting with the uh, one for the air conditioning compressor and the um, power steering pump I believe uh, it's a, you're going to have to loosen a 14 millimeter bolt there and then undoing it with a 12 millimeter bolt there. There is also a 12 millimeter bolt on the back of this little uh, slider assembly thing that you will need to loosen from the back side. And you will need to hold the other end with a 12 millimeter wrench just so it doesn't rotate. But then after that, you can loosen the uh, the alternator. I mean, the, I'm sorry. You can loosen the the tensioner and be able to get enough slack in this belt to pull it off, just like that. Now you'll basically do the same thing for the um, water pump and alternator pulley. Uh, except for this one doesn't have as easy 
to get to access, but there's a uh, similar same setup right there on the alternator. You're going to have to loosen a 14 millimeter bolt here and then undo the bolt there to lower it down. So next, we're going to be undoing these four 10 millimeter bolts inside the crankshaft pulley. Just those four, not the center one. And um, you really should do this before you take off the belts, because uh, they'll sort of stop the pulley from rotating. So let's see if I can get these out with get these bolts out without uh, having to put the belts back on. I was able to put the car into sixth gear, and that stopped the uh, crankshaft from rotating. But these are now loose, all of them finger tight. And so now you can take those bolts out. I was able to just wiggle it with my hand um, and get it to come off. So I'm going to show you all a comparison between these two plates. So here you have the old plate. It's got this little slot for a, uh, an, a centering pin that comes through the uh, crankshaft or whatever. Um, and then uh, you have this one, which is slotted. And so you can see that if the bolt holes are straight in there, you can still rotate this. And so now, basically, we're going to take this timing plate off the car and replace it with this one. And uh, of course, you know, make sure that this side is facing out away from the engine when you put it on. And there's your adjustability. There's where you're going to gain a couple of horsepower that Mazda left out. You're only going to be able to run premium, which you should be running anyway. So you can get yourself a couple more horsepower. That's what this wheel does. So with the crank pulley back in, you're going to finger tighten the bolts so that you can still rotate this plate back here. That's the goal. Um, so just put those 10 millimeter bolts back in, just finger tight. 10 millimeter bolts, finger tight. And you can still turn this. It's pretty hard, but you can still adjust it. So while your uh, crank pulley is out, it's a good idea to make a mark with, uh, I just used some white out. There are two little notches, one there and then one there. A little space a little bit apart. According to 5X Racing, the um, the first notch, when that is lined up at top dead center, that's supposed to signify that the crankshaft is at top dead center. Top dead center being uh, read off of the little gauge here. That's a T and a 10. Um, when the first mark, the mark on the right, is at the T, the second mark, which reflects the actual ignition timing, is at about the 10. So you want to make a mark for that one, and that's the one you're going to watch when you use your timing light. So you're going to open up the little diagnostic port in your engine bay. It's located right there. Um, and you're going to jump jumper the 10 and ground, which are these two. That one and that one. And that is going to um, lock the timing for the ECU to 10 degrees. And so you lock that to 10 degrees so that the ECU isn't trying to fight your timing while you adjust the wheel. Uh, the basic process is lock it at 10 degrees, check it, and um, look on the little gauge down by the crankshaft, which is this one, and uh, it'll, it should be at 10 degrees normally. You can advance it to 12 or to 14, which is um, what uh, what they say gains the best power is 14 degrees, but you can go all the way up to 16. I can't find my little jumper wire right now, so a unfolded paper clip should suffice. So next you're going to need to use a timing light um, attached to the uh, number one spark plug wire and since the Miata doesn't have a battery in the front to get power got it connected to some jumper cables and connected to the battery in my mom's BMW Z3 which is conveniently parked right near where I was working. Alright so I've got the air box, uh, the air intake track back on just sort of got this kind of finger tight um, got those things plugged in temporarily 
still able to get a shot at the uh, crankshaft there and basically uh, you're just going to start the car it should idle at, a, at where the engine's supposed to be at uh, 10 uh, degrees ignition timing uh, now only run it like this for a second because you got your water pump and your alternator pulleys not hooked up so you're not going to be getting any extra battery voltage you're not going to be getting any uh, water pump flow uh, but you're just basically going to use that with your spark plug wire lead at number one and you're just gonna shoot this at your timing mark right there and every time the light flashes that little white dot should be lined up with whatever degree you want it to be at. I'm shooting for 14. So you can see it's hovering around 10. Since mine was hovering around 10 to 12 I can just get back behind here turn the timing wheel and we'll try again. So with the wheel advanced as much as I could get it to advance, it's only hitting around 13 and some change. Uh, but I guess it's the best we're going to be able to do. Basically, so now you're going to uh, put all your belts back on and then you can adjust your idle, I think, with this screw because it, it should idle a tiny bit higher than it's supposed to now uh, because of the timing advance. Um, put everything back together and then go do some driving with the top down and uh, windows open and double check to make sure that um, make sure that you don't hear any pinging. If not, and if you hear any detonation, you need to retard the timing a little bit. But other than that, that's pretty much it. So after figuring out that the uh, timing marks were each worth two degrees and that I was actually at 16 degrees timing, um, I actually experienced no detonation on a 93 octane on that, but uh, it's real easy to adjust. Even when the engine's hot, you can still do it. Uh, uh, it doesn't burn your hands or anything. Basically, you're going to use a 10 mil. Um, undo this. You're going to use your 10 mil and go down in here to the crankshaft pulley, and you can undo the four bolts. Um, just loosen them, and then use a screwdriver and a hammer and just tap on those little tabs on the wheel. Um, going towards the driver's side or clockwise is timing advance. Going towards the alternator uh, or the passenger side is timing retard. And so I pulled out uh, another degree or two of timing. Because uh, people say that on these engines uh, around 14 or 15 degrees is maximum power. Any more than that and uh, it, it loses a little bit of power. After uh, having the 5X Racing timing advance wheel installed for about a week, um, a couple hundred miles, uh, a couple things I noticed is it does seem a little bit more peppy um, in the lower range of RPMs and actually it does seem to pull a little bit better in all the RPMs which uh, you know corresponds to the 5 to 6 horsepower gain um, I'm 5 horsepower, 6 foot-pounds of torque gain that they advertise. Um, I feel like that could be true. Also, um, a side effect that I had hoped would be there is um, with the timing advance, I seem to be getting a little bit better gas mileage, but I haven't done enough miles to really test that, so I'll probably, uh, if there's a difference, I'll post it in the video description once... Uh, I get a couple more miles on the car, but overall for a total of, it was 35, 40 bucks shipped to my door in about half an hour to install. Um, pretty decent mod for the Mazda Miata.